Man, shooting videos for the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube is a lot of fun. I just take you with me on my fishing adventures. But shooting for traditional TV is a pain in the ass. You'll get to see some of that today. I'm taking Kevin Ford, host of the Louisiana Outdoor Adventures TV show, fishing in Delacro today, one of Southeast Louisiana's most popular ports. Now I've done shows with Kevin in the past, and it's always a lot of work. Very difficult to get on consistent action because you're constantly having to stop and do something for TV. His cameraman, Joey Bordelon, is going to be trailing us today in a separate boat, which is always kind of a pain, having a trail boat. So we got that working against us today. Not only that, but man, it got really cold this weekend. It's cold today. I got a heavy coat on. It's April. It shouldn't be this chilly. But hopefully those water temps are still up and those fish will still be in these springtime patterns. I think they will be. I'm optimistic we're going to find some fish, but we might have to work a little bit to find them. No doubt about it, this is going to be a lot of work, but it's also going to be a lot of fun. Are we running anymore right now, Bob? Okay. We're going to fish 75 yards that way. Okay, so I can take off. I don't. I can kind of yeah. sort of get dressed. We'll um, idle in there. I'll get away from y'all and then... All right, April has decided it wants to be January. It is cold out here. I mean, cold, cold. It's really wet, 100% humidity. We got probably a 12 to 15 knot northeast wind. Now working in our favor is we've got some beautiful water here. It's as good as it was last week when I fished the same area. Got a falling tide, it's been falling for a while. Check the buoy before I left home. I really like a rising tide much better. We have to wait a little bit for that, but I think we can pick up a few fish while it's falling. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna troll up here. I mean, what you may want to do is go ahead of us and shoot back toward us. That's, that's why I was asking. Go on the other side of that bend, maybe a little bit to your left. So this is all the behind the scenes stuff you don't see on a fishing TV show. It takes forever to get set up. Everything is a production. If you don't have patience, if you don't have patience, you should stick with your day job. A little right, Joey, a little right. It gets real shallow right there. There he is. Oh, I, I good trout, good trout, good trout. Good job. Ooh, that's nice, bud. There we go. Fish hey. number one. On my drink. Look, this that's, is- That's how, gonna how, happen all day. How big is this boat? 18 feet. 18 feet of boat, one foot of drink, and it's on top of my stuff. It's got a lid on it, does it? I'm not casting too far to the left. There he is. I think I passed him. There he is. Cast a little more to the right. Oh, oh. there's what? I didn't see that. Yeah, there's a bunch of fish here. Make sure you're getting down. There he is. All right. All right, you're pepper trout number two. If I can get him in the boat this time, stay on, buddy. I think you're gonna get that. Stay one on, buddy. Boat. Stay on, buddy. I think you got him. Boom. These are nice trout, too. Nice trout. They're all nice when they're keepers. Yeah. What we're doing here, Todd, is really kind of a, kind of weird. Is that we're in the spring, which you wouldn't know we're in the spring, by the way. No, you're by the right. Way we're dressed. But we're in the spring right now, and we are fishing in deep water. Normally, what you think of is wintertime deep water. But this is a little bit different. Todd does this every year. He gets in these canals and gets in this deep water, and these speckled trout are in this deep water. So, something a little bit different. There he is. Got him, Kevin? Oh, yeah, I got him. Something a little bit different. It's a good trout, good trout. Nice to see a good, healthy trout. All right, there we go. How good do we fish. start a morning, huh? But, all right, Todd. My, my deal is why? The why is because the croaker spawn. I'm gonna give you the right side. That's where the fish are. Oh, I don't care. We can go anywhere we want, but I'm not gonna. Play. The croakers spawn in the winter time, and the juvenile croakers get on these ledges. Uh huh. And the trout follow them in here. The, the keys are you want to have deep water with shallow water close by, and you gotta have swift moving water. And obviously, you want clean water. But I've caught them here in dirty water. Oh. Much more important that you have that swift moving water. Boy, they whack it too. Yeah, they, they whack it. Absolutely. It's it's that's the big difference. Oh, from a wintertime <laughs> bite. In winter, you know, it's that soft, subtle bite. Oh, look at that, buddy. 
in spring, boy, they really whack it. Now, Kevin, I tell you, a lot of times, this fish can be really nice. The fish we caught today are pretty nice. Yeah. But sometimes you get those little fish that just kind of tap your bait. They hit it like a ton of bricks, but you can't hook them. But that's not the case with him. No. Oh, golly. I had one, too. I mean, these are just really, really solid, beautiful speckled trout. 15, 16 inch fish, the kind that are fun to fight and still delicious to eat. I love them. Now, it's really important when you're doing this that you keep these fish going. Once you get them hot, they're down there looking for baits. They're seeing their buddies get excited and get pulled out. They get very excited and start looking around. You gotta get a bait in front of them as quickly as you can. Now, that doesn't always happen with TV because it really slows things down. Also with these videos, but fortunately, Kevin's up here and feeding them while I'm talking to you. Yeah. Oh, come on, stay on. Stay on. That's a good fish. He might be foul hooked. See that, he's a red. That is a foul hook fish. Foul hooked. Oh, oh. Fre freshwater cat. <laughs> foul hooked <laughs> freshwater cat. <laughs> you catch anything here. Well, you know what? That is, that's a perfect example of why we have these fish here. Correct. Because we've got this brackish marsh. Correct. People, I mean, it, people, people are so scared of river water. You're exactly right. It, it drives me crazy. The reason our marshes are so productive is because of that mix of fresh and salt. Freshwater catfish, we'll catch bass today, we'll catch reds. They're all mixed together. Speckled trout love brackish water. Now in the summertime, they got to go outside and right. spawn, of course. But the speckled trout are going to find salty water to spawn. They're not going to have any trouble with the spawn. Those little babies come in here, they grow up, they get to be the fish that we're catching today, and then they move out in the summertime to spawn. And I tell you what, all the fish we caught today is the best eater. Right. No doubt. Now, Kevin, there's a 100% chance each of us on our last cast were too impatient. Let me get on the other side of you. Yeah, because I... Neither one of us got down. But I will get down right here. And I'm going to call my shot and say I'm going to catch a trout on this cast. Well, this is your home territory now. You can fish all the way back to the boat. There he, I was is. About to say. there he is. Excuse me, Kevin. Yeah, pardon me. Don't want me. First he gets. First he messes Keep up. Back. First he messes up my food thing. Then it's my pants. You know, these are like khaki pants. I could, I could have worn them to church or something. You know. Now we got a northeast wind, which, believe it or not, for this part of Plaquemines Parish actually pushes water in. So once this tide now, changes course, it's gonna really roll in. Now you you did, you were on the bottom where were you were like on the flat? I was on over. the edge of the flat, correct. Okay. Uh -huh. I noticed that. And he was just waiting in ambush for a little croaker to pass by. One. And he saw what he thought was a little croaker. Yeah you would never think but it was a limbo slice matrix shed. There he is! Yeah. Get him forward. Nice. Ooh, Good nice. trout. Good trout. And the key to this is getting your bait on the bottom. No doubt. I'm fishing with a 3 8 ounce Rockport rattle or jig head. And I'm going to tell you, it is, if I had a half ounce, I'd take it. But that's a pretty fish. Yeah, these, pretty are, fish. these are all pretty. I mean, they're, they're all nice, yeah. You don't even have to put them on a tape. Yeah, and you said you'll catch them like. 21, 22 inches Up to sometimes. 21 inches, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a fun way to fish. Now, Kevin, I did a video on this last week, and I got a ton of questions about where to do it. And I told everybody it happens all over the coast. Now, you can't do this. And we kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier. You can't do this in the real heavy salinity areas. Mm -hmm. It is. It's where you have that fresher water. It's basically all the areas very nearby where the fish spend time in the winter. Now, a lot of times in the winter, they get in those dead-end canals where you have no moving water. That doesn't work this time of year. You've got to have the, these swift currents. So bayous are generally better than canals. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kevin, what, we lost three in a row? Make, let's not make it four in a row. Come on, Kevin. I'm counting on you, buddy. <laughs> He's not in the boat yet. No, he's not. He's not in the boat yet. Oh, we got him. All right. <laughs> Finally. Marshman. 
That fish is not in the boat yet. He is not in the boat, but he will be momentarily. That fish is boom. In the boat. Now, this is smaller than the other fish we were catching. He's probably about 14 inches. But nobody will turn him away when it's time to eat. No. Oh! <laughs> Kevin, I, I think, lost mine. Oh, we almost had a double. I'm holding up my end of the deal. Yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. Right. How did I, you know, I ruined that whole thing, didn't I? You did. We had a double. We had a double, and it was just, I mean, I ruined it. Look how beautiful this speckled trout is. Black back, shiny white belly, double fang teeth. Such a scary looking fish, aren't they? Speckled trout, whew, I love them. There's two, oh. Fish, nice. Right on the side of the boat. Get him, Kevin. Pretty, oh, isn't that look pretty? At that. Isn't that, that never gets old, old, does it? No, never. it never, ever, ever gets old. Nice. Look at that. Good fish, Kevin. Look at that. You talk about fishing leaders. I think the leader is important as well because of the, I think a fluorocarbon leader in this clean water is important. Yeah, definitely. This water is really, really nice. I know viewers can't really tell, but uh, you can just tell by the color of these fish how pretty this water is. <clears throat> you know, at 16 foot depths that we're fishing, it's probably not as important as it is in say two feet of water, but I've just got no confidence fishing without a fluorocarbon leader. I just don't. I will always have one on at the end of my braid. I enjoy this. Oh yeah. I, 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 I enjoy the challenge. Uh -huh. I, it's because you're not going to catch one every cast. You're nope. going to miss a ton of fish and you actually feel like you've done something <laughs> when you're fishing. When you catch one, right. Yeah. Each, each fish is valuable. And you know, to me, throwing a popping cork with live shrimps, that's just not my thing. I'd much rather do this and work a little bit to try and catch a few fish than, than load the boat with that technique. But sometimes you got to have them, you know? And of course. And I, I don't fault anybody who uses it. If yeah. I got to fish only occasionally, I would definitely use live yeah. shrimp. But to me, the fun is kind of the search. You know, even coming in here, which is a spot I've fished many times, you don't know how they're going to be set up each day. And so yeah. you got to kind of figure out where the fish are holding and see if you can maximize your efficiency. And I'll tell you, this, this is very typical for this type of fishing as far as getting these lulls. You'll have schools of fish that move in, they go crazy, they're feeding on the bait. You catch a few of them and they kind of move on and another school will come in or the same school moves back in and you catch them again. But we're definitely in the middle of a little lull right now. We've made eight or 10 casts with no bites. Well, with no fish, I got a bite as well, but couldn't seal the deal. Now see, now that's the last time Todd and I fished together. We fished offshore and we did a tarpon show. I caught my first tarpon and it liked to kill me. And he sat and made fun of me the entire time. I did. The entire time. And then we ran literally from one side of the river to the other side of the river. And late in the afternoon, Todd gets his tarpon. And that was the most humbling butt whipping I've ever had. We both like to die. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. First tarpon I've ever caught. Man, it was just like a glorious experience. Absolutely loved it. But they will whip your butt, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's the last time you're ever making fun of anybody yeah. on a boat offshore. Yeah, and I caught mine at the end of the day of a long August day. It was brutally hot. Man, it was tough, but I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link to it here. It's on Kevin's channel, Louisiana Outdoor Adventures. All right, so our fish have totally shut down. They probably all froze to death, I don't know. We're gonna give this spot like two more minutes and then we're gonna move on. This pattern holes in so many different bayous. It's foolish to just sit in one spot that's not producing. Joey, we're about to move. So if you want to pack up. Oh, baby. Smoked. Looks like we got a shot here, Joey. Just wait till we catch one. <laughs> Nice trout, nice trout. Get in the boat, baby. So glad to see you, you're a sight for sore eyes. Haven't caught a fish in 45 minutes. Thanks for breaking the ice. Man, you were hooked good too. Good job, buddy.
No, nah, it's kind of where we're casting. You might want to come like maybe, maybe come on this side of us and position up here. Yeah. Kevin, come on back here. I'll get up front. No, look, a lot of times it's angled. Oh, it is? Yeah, so come on back here. I'll figure something out up here. Oh, so you want to be up here. Okay. It'd be good to get on some here because we got a much more favorable situation with that wind coming this way and the tide going this way. There's another one. Yep. There he is. Got him going now, buddy. Oh, nice trout. Oh, that's so pretty. Trout. Isn't that pretty? Nice. Well, we made a, we had to make a little move to one of your spots where you catch fish in the falling tide. Falling tide, yeah, absolutely. This, this spot is exclusively a falling tide spot. And the reason is, Kevin, the tide pushes through here, it bumps into this ledge right here. And like I told you earlier, the fish use those ledges to push bait up against the structure and, and feast. Like that? Got him? There we feast. go. There we go. That's what you said. Ooh, nice. The water. Let's get him in the boat because we've had problems with that today. Sweet. Yeah. There we go. Got to go with the double click. I love the double click. The double click? There he is. That's a good fish. Come on up, baby. Oh, he's coming. Come on, we'll see you jump. Oh, he's jump. I tell you what, he's not as big as I thought he was. Not a bad fish, but boy, he felt really nice. Hey, look, I'm not complaining. No, these are all. What good. would you I say? Mean, 16 inches? I mean, yeah, it's 16, 16 inch fish. fish. You can't complain about that. No. These good, are all. I mean, good except, solid of course, trout. Of course, except for the last fish. I <laughs> these are all. These are all like really, really solid fish. Kevin, we fish too much. Clearly, you and I fish too much. 16. 16 inches. There he is. Yep. Look at the boat, huh? Yeah. Oh man, that was a good fish. Hate to miss him. See, no wintertime trout acts like that. <laughs> Goes crazy like that. My tide might be relaxing a little bit because I'm not having a lot of trouble getting down. It normally rips through here. It should be rising within a couple hours. All right. So the theme of the day. Is find a hot bite, stay on it for a little bit, and then watch it deteriorate to nothing. Really weird, these fish are just shutting down, can't find them again in any of our spots. Kevin and I have hit maybe five spots, caught fish in two of them. The other three were duds, but uh, even the two we caught them in, really, really hot. Every cast action goes to nothing at all, and you can't get another bite. Really weird, but sometimes it's that way. We just gotta find something a little bit more consistent. We're gonna make a big old tour and we'll definitely find some feeding fish no question about it conditions are just too good today this water is gorgeous everywhere we've gone the water's been beautiful uh it's gonna happen no doubt about it but man it's still chilly out here i don't know why you come up yet it's feeling like a red nope nice trout Joey. We just caught one. All right, let's keep these rolling. Unlike our last few stops. Don't step on the rods. I got a good fish. I wanted to come up in front of the camera and show it off. There we go. Good trout. Good trout. There we go. No, that's a trout. Trout? Uh huh. A, no, it's a red. <laughs> it's a red. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Trout, like, we'll see. Maybe it's a foul hook trout. That's foul hook. Oh, it's a foul hook trout. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Anybody can catch them in the mouth. Anybody can catch a fish in the mouth, but who can catch a fish? It's a keeper. In the belly. There he is. There he is. I just missed one right there. Well, I appreciate you missing him. Cause I got him. This feels like another nice fish. Oh, oh God! Oh, what, 
a black drum. Not even a big black drum. Come on, let's go. Let's go before we accidentally catch another one. Let's go, let's go, L-E-T-S-G-O. I gotta change this battery real quick. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna go about three or four minutes on a run. So Joey, the first place we come to, I would not set up the cameras. They got two turns, we're gonna hit them both, and we could hit fish in either one or neither. No, I wouldn't. Oh, I got one All right, maybe so. <laughs> oh, that's mine. There we go. <laughs> there we go. You caught yours a mile out there, huh? Yeah. Well, I haven't caught him yet. You hooked yours, I'll say. All right. You're not smoking yesterday, mess on. No, you're hanging. I'm, I'm impressed. I told you that earlier. A lot of people can't get this. There's nothing like a bottom bite. It is, it's so much fun. Got him? There you go. That's a nice fish. Not a bad one. Nothing wrong with that. Get in the boat, buddy. Now we're set up a little bit, we moved again, and we're set up a little bit different in this spot, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's a ledge. This, this kind of defies typical logic. But I know that the fish hold here on a rise. We got a tide coming right through here, rising tide. We're really on the back side of the ledge, working our baits up. Generally, that's not what you want to do. You want to fish something like this on a fall, where it's going to be hitting this. But I've fished this spot enough to know this is where these fish hold on a rising tide. So you can't argue with it. So those cool shots you see on TV, this is how they happen. Oh, we got us another nice Kevin trout way out Man, there. It's gonna take you about six weeks to get that one in. I know, I'm gonna need some. Uh... <laughs> you wanna get you a sandwich? <laughs> Give me a sandwich. I need a little nourishment. He hasn't come up at all, has he? No, he's, he's, well, he's been, he was so far out there. He was so far out there. Let's see. There he is. There you go. Pretty trout. Pretty fish. Did we click him? No, I will though. No, click him. Where's your clicker, <laughs> oh. It's not allowed. No, I'm gonna click him. Just click. Thank you. All right. You know, you talk about fishing this tide being difficult, but once you get that bait to the bottom in a situation like this, when the water's just going straight out, if you get it, it's pretty darny. I mean, we're just sitting here pretty much jigging. Correct, but what you gotta do is maintain contact with the bottom. Now, obviously, you pick it up off the bottom, but you gotta make sure it falls back down. What people tend to do, pick it up and let it fall about halfway down, or pick it up again, let it fall halfway down again, and it never gets it back down to the bottom. That's a common problem when people try and tight line for trout. I, 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 as soon as I- you got him? Yeah, the casting, let it hit the bottom, <laughs> and start retrieving. As soon as you start retrieving, they hit it. Oh, what happened to you? Did you try my method? No, no, I like my method. You like your method? <laughs> I like my method. Can you come this way? Yeah, look at that. Got some, uh, got some gr grass job, on Kevin. and everything. All right, so it's one o'clock. Kevin and I have caught fish all day in almost every spot we've hit, but we haven't whacked them in any one spot. By and large, we kind of hunt around, hunt around, find some fish, put a bunch in the boat anywhere from maybe five to 12, and then we gotta move on. This is probably our last stop for the day, depending on how many we pick up here, but we've already put maybe, what, Kevin, five or six in the boat here? Yeah, we put five or six in the boat here, and it's been it's been kind of a crazy weather day. But Yeah, given the conditions, look, we got 32 fish in the boat right now. Given the conditions, hey, you yeah. can't ask for much more than that. I'm not complaining at all. I know Kevin's not. I think he's getting a TV show. I know I'm getting a video. Joey, unfortunately, is over there having to film everything, so he hasn't wet a line at all. But, but Joey is, yeah, and then Joey's got to watch us, you know, to see if we catch fish because the last time we told Joey, hey, we're, no, there's no fish here, and then boom, <laughs> there's fish here. Right, right. So Joey's probably about ready to, Joey's like the hero of the day. Yeah, Joey's got to set up like three or four cameras every stop we make, and the way I fish, I move a ton. So we'll pull up in an area, he'll wait and see if we catch fish. If we start catching fish, he sets up the camera. Sometimes the fish have shut off by the time he gets all the cameras set up. 
but uh, but yeah, he's done a great job today, and uh, it's a thankless job. But I know he enjoys it. And he's very very good at it. And he's probably never going to fish with you again as much as you move. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Oh, oh, he's not little. That's a nice That's fish. Good. Oh yeah, nice fish, buddy. No, no, no he's shrunk a little bit, but yeah, no, he's not nice. Stick with your first statement. That's the most beautiful speckled trout I've ever seen in my life. That is a nice fish. Yeah, it's not a bad fish. 15 no. inch fish, maybe 14. Yeah, yeah, he's probably 14. Oh, you got that one though. That's a better fish. Yeah. That's a you good fish. Them. Yeah, it is. Well, oh, they're all they're all good. They're fish. all good fish. You're right. They're all good fish. Come on, big boy! Come on, big boy! Look at the apple board. Apple board. Get out of this. We'll put you in the ice chest and get you in some warm, warmer weather. Oh, Kevin's got one too. Look how fat this fish is. Look at that. That's a solid fish. Wait a minute. You want to see a solid fish? Yeah, let's see. Let's wait, see. wait, hold on. You let's want see to see your a solid, solid fish? fish? Let's see what I'm you got. I'm going to show you a solid all fish, right, all right. okay? All right, I'm ready. I'm about to show you a solid fish, okay? You're going to show me a baby. Look at that. Look at that little thing. That's not a baby. That is. Look at that. No, nah, you're right. That's a good fish. Yeah. I thought he was when he hit it. I thought he was oh, as big as yours. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like. I was like, oh, I got one bigger than Todd. I got one bigger than Todd. I'll hold mine real close. This fish isn't that long. He's just fat. Hey, you know what happens when you catch the when you catch the fish first? What's that? You get to open the ice chest. Yeah, I'll take them. All right. So I've got. I know you're a television show host, so you're kind of spoiled. So I'm not spoiled. You're, you're used to being taken care of. I'll take care of you. Man, mission accomplished. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of behind the scenes look at the making of a fishing TV show. Kevin and Joey both do a great job with it. A lot of fun spending the day with those guys. And fortunately, it all came together. We put some fish in the boat. Now there's nothing left to do but pick up and head on home. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up as always. And please subscribe to Marshman Masson on YouTube. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we will see you right here on Marshman Masson.